Hey VC, Brian uh, Baker, Gibson A9 on YouTube, and hope you're enjoying your Labor Day weekend. I know I am. Had a, it's a Sunday today. Had a nice afternoon nap and uh, ready to dig in for some more prog vinyl video here. I'm um, going through my prog vinyl collection, and today we're in the G's. So we've done A through F. And getting into the G's, there's a lot to go through today. Of course, in the G's, you've got uh, Peter Gabriel and Genesis. So, uh, um, certainly a lot to talk about there. I will start out by saying, before I go into it, I am not... I'm a bit behind in terms of Genesis and Peter Gabriel compared to most prog collectors. I've always been more in the Yes ELP thing. I've And I was kind of a latecomer on, um, on Genesis, so... Um, not the most complete collection there, but forgive me if you will. So we'll start out. So Peter Gabriel, this is not his first solo album, I don't believe. I know he had three or four solo albums, all of them entitled, I think, Peter Gabriel, uh, at least for a while. Um, this one actually has uh, one of my favorites that he ever did was Salisbury Hill. Um, great song. It's in 7-4. Any of you uh, drummers out there know that 7-4 is not your standard, 4-4 four, four is the most common, but uh, writing a song that sounds natural in 7-4 is hard to do, but that's, a, that's just a great, great song. Climbing up on Salisbury Hill. Um, so again, missing most of the Peter Gabriel solo efforts. Uh, the one with Shock the Monkey on it and um, Games Without Frontiers. Don't have that one, need to pick that up. But got this not too long ago. Peter Gabriel, Gabriel plays live. Uh, this is excellent. This is, you know, classic uh, theatrical era Gabriel. Um, double album, Gatefold. Uh, this is an album that a lot of people like. This was more kind of a pop effort, but even Peter Gabriel's pop era is just extremely good quality. Uh, it's an excellent album. Um, Red Rain, Sledgehammer, the pop hit. Um, Mercy Street, just a beautiful song, uh, but Big Time and Sledgehammer were his uh, crazy kind of mainstream pop videos with the real, I don't know if you remember the videos from MTV, but real creative uh, videos on those, so uh, Peter Gabriel So, so Gabriel obviously having been the lead singer for Genesis, um, would be ranked under Prague. So speaking of Genesis, here we go. Um, the first Genesis album ever from Genesis to Revelation was maybe what, 1969, something like that? Don't have that one, so imagine it, okay? Uh, second Genesis album though, excellent. I love this album. Genesis Trespass. Um, this has got some great keyboard work. I'm a big keyboard Hammond organ kind of fan, but uh, um, The Knife, the song The Knife on Trespass is just killer. I love that. It's probably one of my favorite Genesis songs. Um, maybe more of a raw edge sound to that, but um, great album. Next one, and now we're getting into all-time prog classics here. These Genesis albums are ranked right up there with the best output from Yes, like Close to the Edge. and. Um, but Nursery Crime, with just an iconic album cover. Uh, the is, there's an issue of a Prague magazine for you real Prague type people like me. Uh, there's a, a British magazine called Prague, and they interview the artist who made this cover uh, lately. He, had, he, he did a lot of album covers for different groups, but um, Nursery Crime is a true classic, as is Foxtrot. Um, Genesis Foxtrot, another great album cover painting there. Um, this is 1972, and this is, um, these are all famous Charisma label. My copies are Buddha uh, issues for the U.S. pressings. Um, great shape, I got them at a record show, three or four of them as a group. This is probably my favorite. Um, Genesis, uh, Selling England by the Pound, um, a prog classic here, and Dancing with the Moonlit Night, uh, Firth of Fifth, Battle of Epping Forest, uh, The Cinema Show, Isle of Plenty, 
this is just a, a great album. The, the, um, as vocals go, um, I'm not as into Peter Gabriel's vocals as I am maybe into John Anderson and Chris Squire, but um, to, you, to those of you that are, more power to you. It's great. I, he's still a great vocalist, and the thing that makes Genesis... Uh, I keep flipping that around. I need to put it down, but to me, the thing that makes Genesis up there with the best was their ability to write... Uh, just songwriting ability, great melodies, um, great multi-part lengthy songs um, that don't get boring, excellent lyrics. So, next one, Genesis Live, and there's Peter Gabriel in his. Uh, see if I can get the glare off of it there. Peter Gabriel in his one of his freaky uh, theatrical outfits that he was big into back then. Um, it would have been great to have seen a live Genesis show. I came of age more in the early 80s, so I, I missed a lot of the era that I would have liked to have seen. Um, another prog classic, double album, Genesis, Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Uh, and this is pretty epic also. Um, probably among their, their best work. Some people would rank that as their favorite. So picked up a nice copy of that recently, real good shape. Genesis, uh, Trick of the Tail. And so now we're up to about 1976, and I don't, not being a Genesis expert, I don't remember at what point Gabriel left and Pete and Phil Collins uh, started singing lead, but I think it was maybe around this era, so. Um, Genesis, Wind and Wuthering. Love that album cover. Wonderful album cover. Wind and Wuthering, and I hate to say it, but I actually picked up a copy at a Goodwill or somewhere of this, and it was signed by all the band members. Um, and a few years ago, I said, hey, maybe I'll put that on eBay and see what I can get. So I sold it on eBay. I have no idea what I got for it, but that was pretty stupid. I should have kept that. That doesn't pop up every day, so stupid. Uh, Genesis Seconds Out, another live double set. Um, and this is great. I've listened to this uh, squonk and the carpet crawl and um, live versions of Supper's Ready, Dance on a Volcano, so uh, that's great stuff. All right, getting more on to their modern, more modern era, what I would call, these are things I start remembering hearing on the radio when they came out, uh, Abacab by Genesis. Real clean copy of this. Um, no Reply at All, um, Man on the Corner. Um, I remember spinning this a lot in college. Great record. Uh, Genesis, Three Sides Live. And that's another double, double live set. Um, what's that from? 1982. So this was high school era for me. So that's a great, great live set. Another one I remember, uh, that's a real cool album cover there. Genesis, just self-titled. Um, Mama, That's All, Home by the Sea is a great song. Illegal Aliens, kind of a funny little ditty that they did. And uh, really love Home by the Sea, though. That was uh, a good output. And really, again, in terms of classic progressive rock, um, you know, Foxtrot and... and and uh, those early albums would be considered classic prog, and just like Yes or anybody else, these went more toward, you know, pop prog at that point. But uh, again, these guys are still good songwriters, so even if it was poppier, it was, uh, it was some pretty good pop music. So, uh, Invisible Touch, I'm probably, this is a, yeah, that's the studio album for Invisible Touch. So, Tonight, 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 Land of Confusion is a great song. Uh, In Too Deep. Um, remember hearing that on the ra on rock radio back in the 80s. But, uh, um, great work. So, that, that really wraps up what I've got for Genesis. And again, um, the Gabriel era of Genesis probably being considered true classic, all-time classic prog, but... Uh, a really solid catalog that I'm still actually going through and learning. I haven't, I haven't listened to those near as much as I have some of my other prog favorites. So um, I know Derek's a big uh, Genesis fan, and um, Dwayne, and some of you other guys out there. Um, as a progressive rock guy, I should be more familiar with them, but I'm not. So 
I'm getting there though, so I'm starting to figure it out. All right, next group in the G's would be Gentle Giant. So, Gentle Giant acquiring the taste, I believe, uh, was maybe not their first album. Maybe this might be their second. This is um, this is a Vertigo copy. Um, maybe I should. How do we do this? Maybe like this. But they're a clever album cover there, but. Um, I think this copy is actually Vertigo Spaceship design on the label, not the Vertigo Swirl. But uh, um, next one uh, I have is Octopus. This is the uh, second pressing cover. I would love to have a copy of the original cover, which was the Roger Dean painting of the octopus. But really, those are hard to come by. Um, this one originally was die cut right here, where the the edges of the jar would be die cut. This one's not even die cut. Um, this is from 1973. This has a song Knots, uh, which is one of my Gentle Giant favorites. Um, they were really different. They had, again, kind of a folk sound to them, uh, some very complex vocal harmonies, which uh, I really like. Um, I, I'm a big fan of vocal harmony. That's People say, why do you like Prague? And you collect bluegrass, and you collect doo-wop. What? How do you? Yeah, well, the only thing I can think of in common that the reason I like them is they all have uh, um, at least doo-wop and bluegrass great vocal harmonies. And my favorite prog groups tend to have uh, well-done vocal harmonies. But next one would be the Power and the Glory. There we go. Power and the Glory by Gentle Giant. Um, kind of a rough copy of that. Um, don't remember what year that was, uh, maybe 74, 74, that's right. Uh, next one, Gentle Giant, uh, Freehand. And I haven't listened to this one too much, but this is, uh, also considered to be, I guess, Gentle Giant's, uh, really excellent era. They had a stretch of four or five albums that are just must-haves. Um, this one's kind of getting out of that era, maybe. Gentle Giant Interview. And this is getting on into 76, kind of a range, you know. All the prog bands, once punk hit in maybe 76 type range, there was more pressure on the prog bands to not do prog as it used to be because it wasn't selling, so they changed their sound and maybe you know, that's how you ended up with Love Beach and some of these disasters, but, um, Gentle Giant Live I don't have. I need to find a copy of that. Um, actually saw it recently and thought I had it, so I didn't pick it up, but. All right, moving on in the G's. Uh, David Gilmour, a guitar player for Pink Floyd, of course, and vocalist. Um, this is his first solo album, self-titled David Gilmour, and this is a great, great album. Of course, his guitar playing is just incredible but his vocals um, really have you know the, the sound of Pink Floyd that you're used to hearing is Dave, many times David Gilmour singing and Richard Wright the keyboard player singing the high harmony parts and that just uh, is a wonderful combination but um, um, there's no way out of here the second track on this album is one of my all-time favorites just a beautiful kind of a haunting sound to it a little bit later on, and that was from what year? That was from 78, I think maybe in 80 or so, his second solo album, About Face. And this one I remember coming out, uh, I used to have the, remember in the record store they'd have those 12 inch posters that were just for advertising? I used to have the little 12 inch album cover poster for that, but sorry, this is 1984. Um, again, a little popier but not really because it's not really pop it's just uh, excellent song cruise is great um, uh, murder love on the air blue light um, some really good really good effort here David Gilmore about face all right next one um, this would be considered Prague uh, most definitely and Great Roger Dean cover. Look at that. This is Greenslade, self-titled first release from Greenslade. And 
Greenslade was uh, named after the the keyboard player, I guess, and I can't remember his first name. Somebody Greenslade. Let, that's embarrassing. Let's figure it out. This is a really rough copy of this. It's got water damage and such. Um, the interior is just great, though. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, this is all ripped up and water damaged, but the the writing on that's done a lot like the early Yes covers. Um, awesome Roger Dean effort on this album cover, but uh, David Greenslade, that's what it was. David Greenslade. Um, first album. I do not have a copy of Bedside Manners or Extra. I have been looking for one. They're really hard to come by, and I'd like to get a better conditioned copy of this one as well. Uh, but that's some great, you know, rocking prog with great keyboard in it. So, um, next one is one I picked up uh, recently in Asheville at a, at a record show to, at Harvest Records there, Red Queen to Griffin 3 by Griffin. And this is always been, I've read about this being considered a prog classic and had never really heard it and sort of bought it sight unseen, but um, man, this is great, great music on here. I was just really impressed. And I mentioned earlier, when a band has a guy that says uh, he's the, the bassoon player, you know, when a band has a, a bass, a drummer, a guitarist, a guy playing piccolo and a guy on bassoon, you know you're in for something different. So uh, if you ever see a copy of that one somewhere for cheap, definitely pick that up. Red Queen to Griffin 3. And that's a promo copy there, I believe. Um, all right, rounding out the G's would be GTR. So GTR was a project uh, by Steve Howe in... Uh, 84 or 85 maybe, no, 86 was when this came out. I went, remember seeing, uh, went and saw the tour, um, saw this live up near Washington, D.C., where I lived. Um, Max Bacon was the guy, no, not Max Bacon, yeah, Max Bacon on lead vocals, Jonathan Mover was the drummer. Um, so this was Steve Howe and Steve Hackett. So the Yes and Genesis guitar players teaming up for some incredible guitar work on here. The songwriting is pretty good. Um, when the Heart Rules the Mind was good. The Hunter, Here I Wait. Sketches in the Sun was Howe's little solo project on there. Uh, Hackett to Bits was Hackett's little solo that he did on here, but uh, pretty solid effort, really. It's not maybe destined for prog greatness, but there's some, some good, uh, good tracks on there. And finally, this is this is kind of cheesy. This is the 12-inch single for The Hunter. So, you know, in the 80s, and that's a promo, 80s where they were big into 12-inch singles. And this is, it's actually an EP, I guess. It's got The Hunter and Sketches in the Sun and Hack It to Bits. So, um, GTR EP. So, that's it for the G's uh, in the Prog Collection. And next we're on to H's and I's and uh, see what we have there. Of course, in H you, you have Hackett and Howe, guitar players uh, that we just talked about. So um, anyway, enjoyed it. And uh, I really appreciate the comments from you guys on these videos. Um, this is kind of a one slice of my music collection. It's the progressive rock. Um, by no means do I only like progress progressive rock. I have whole row down here of standard classic rock and oldies and uh, doo-wop and bluegrass and jazz and things of that nature, but uh, I do love Prague, so i love to talk about it. Rob from Boston, uh, I'm glad you're watching these videos. Um, went and got, Rob, I got you a little present today, so I got you a little copy of PFM Cook coming in the mail, so uh, not the best copy in the world. It's got ring wear and it's a bit crackly, so... Uh, but until you find a better copy, it's yours. So thank you guys. Have a good week, and we'll catch you later.